I have been told that instead of saying good morning, I should say happy morning. One thing is there that children try their level best to be happy regardless of what's happening in their life. It is only we adults who have this thing, this is not okay, that is not okay, I'm not happy with this. Children have a habit of, you know, forgiving, moving on, forgetting what negative things are happening and being happy. So I think, okay, yes, I think today, since we are going to be talking about children, let me say happy morning and also say happy Diwali and all the festivals that have been coming in the last one month and uh, more and will continue for some more time right up to the end of the year. So it is festive season. So happy festivities from Diwali onwards to all the other occasions that you celebrate. I also wish you not only a happy morning, but also a serene and peaceful morning. I think that makes a lot of difference, isn't it? More than happiness, if we aim for serenity and for peace and for being calm and satisfied in life, I think that goes a much longer way. Happiness is fleeting. It comes and uh, goes. Anyway, today the topic is why children tell uh, lies. The first thing is, what are lies? What is truth and what is a uh, lie? If you see left, right and center, when we get into arguments with people, we say, no, what I am saying is the truth and what you are saying is a lie. The other person reverses it 180 degrees and says, you are telling a lie and I am telling the truth. This is what we do as adults. Now, children are watching us. Children see this on a day to day basis that there is so much confusion about what the adults are doing. So what is the truth and what is a lie? What is hypocrisy? What is flattery? What is, you know, so many things that come in. Anyway, the point is that I want you to understand that in the world of most of the children, there is no such thing as truth and lies. What they go by is what is accepted by their important adults and what is not accepted. Just to give you an example, supposing there's this little toddler hanging around and uh, parents have bought uh, her uh, nice uh, you know, crayons or sketch pens and given her some rough papers. Mommy is busy in the kitchen and she sits there and she draws a nice duck and she shows it to mommy and mommy is quite thrilled, you know, so fast she has learned and how nicely, how proportionate it is, how she's Feel the colors and all. The moment daddy comes home, she shows it to him and says, see, our lovely darling, how nice she has done. Little later, some visitors and guests come to the house and they are, say, bring, bring, bring that drawing and show them what our daughter made. And now the daughter's watching all this and she's very thrilled. She says, wow, I'm a great artist. The next day, then mommy is in the kitchen and daddy is working. She looks at the nice white wall of the drawing room and says, why don't I draw a much bigger duck over here? It will be permanently on view for visitors and whoever comes and my parents can keep showing them that, see, our daughter has made such a nice duck. And she draws that big duck on the wall. You know what happens to her. Now the confusion is, as I said, what is right and what is wrong? What is truth and what is uh, uh, lies? So let's start off with this premise that children do not have that morals or whatever we call it, which will make them decide that this is the truth and this is the uh, lies. This is what, you know, we talk a lot about children stealing. Children never steal. Children just take things which the adults would not give them if they asked them. So they feel that, okay, now nobody is watching, supposing I take uh, something. Another very lovely example I had seen, there's this teacher, you know, who teaches children with special needs, children who have, you know, whatever developmental disabilities and all that. So they have their limitations in their cognitive functioning. What she would do is in the break, she would get a plate of biscuits and keep it on the table and tell the children Take only one, okay? You should not take more than one because everybody has to eat. 
most of the children learned slowly that yes, even though there are so many biscuits kept, I'm supposed to be taking one. That was the idea that to teach them that. One day it so happened that she went to the home of one of her students and the mother of the child brought a plate of biscuits. The child looked at the teacher and said, take only one, okay? Others also have to eat. Now, her mommy must have got angry with the uh, child. But is it justified? That is what was taught to the child. That's why I'm giving you this real life example to help you to understand that children do not have this concept of morality, truth and lies and all that. However much we may moralize to them. We say that, you know, God will punish you if you do this and you are a sinner if you tell lies, all that does not have an impact because somewhere along the line, what children are listening to what these adults are saying and what the adults are actually doing seems to be totally different. So most of the behavior issues, whether it is telling lies, whether it is stealing things or whatever happens, is because of a confusion in the mind of the uh, child. I am getting two different uh, you know, messages. Mommy keeps on telling the child, never tell lies. Okay. Now one fine day, daddy comes back very tired from office and is just about to start having a cup of tea and relax when his phone rings. And he picks it up. Oh, yes, Mr. Rao, of course. Yes, sir. You are our most important customer, sir. Yes. We are always particular about your shipment, sir. And I am ensuring that your goods are all checked and dispatched on the correct time. Uh, what, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I'm in the factory right now, sir. I am supervising over the dispatch of your materials only. I will see to it that they are dispatched. Then only I will go home. Now, the kid is watching Appa and says, since when did this become factory? I thought this is home. So, obviously, what is daddy doing? Daddy is telling a lie. Now, if he has the courage to confront daddy and ask, or even mommy, if he is very scared of daddy, daddy, he may go to mommy and say, Amma, what is this, Amma? Appa was telling lies. So, you know what explanation is given? No, no, no. You see, daddy came back very tired and it was very, uh, you know, necessary for him because if he had said that he is home, that fellow would have got very angry and then we could, he could have lost that customer and because of that, his bosses would have shouted at him. So there was a particular reason for it. Are you Up till now, I used to think that telling lies is bad regardless of anything. Now I'm told that you can tell lies if there is a reason. Now who decides what is the reason? You're getting my point. This is just one of the things that I want us to understand if you are a person who's dealing with children of any age in whatever capacity. Okay. So here we are. We have made, as usual, you know, a set of slides and some tips and pointers. And uh, Anis has added a lot of nice, interesting graphics to them also to show us what are the reasons why do kids tell lies. Let's take them one by one. The first one reason why children tell lies. Yes. They don't know what is right and wrong. That's what I was telling you just now. Children do not really know what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is lies. Only what is accepted by the elders and what is not accepted by the um, elders. Similarly, it could be for covering up guilt or deficiencies. Particularly children with low self-esteem. Please remember, if you do not bolster the self-esteem of a child, any child who is going through a bout of low self-esteem will resort to telling uh, uh, lies because the child feels I am otherwise inadequate, the only way I can get acceptance or praise is if I tell some lies and whatever. Wanting to avoid punishment, if they are very strict adults, parents, whoever it is, whenever the child feels that I will get very harsh and severe punishment, 
the child tries to resort to telling lies so that I can escape from this punishment. Then imitating adults, this is what I was telling you. Most of the children, unfortunately, have bad role modeling. Some adult or the other. <clears throat> I'm not saying every adult, every parent, you know, tells lies. But even if there's one significant adult in the life of the child who has a habit of continuously telling lies, as it is said, children are very poor at listening to their elders. They are very good at mimicking them. So if they find a bad role model, an adult who's grown up and who's supposed to be in control of his life and who's supposed to be autonomous, if he or she chooses to tell lies, then what's wrong if I do it? The reverse of that, hoping for praise and affection, children who are lonely, children who are insecure. So that's why I'm pointing out to you the reason behind their action. When they feel lonely, when they feel insecure, when they feel that unless I boast, unless I talk about something great, I will not get praise and affection. Okay. Now, if you uh, wait, we have not we have gone up to remedies. We are not finished. After hoping for praise and affection, we have <clears throat> not sure between fact and uh, fiction. A lot of children are in a make-believe world. They fantasize. They go off into a trance of their own because they want to escape this cruel life. They don't want to get stuck with the, uh, you know, the way elders are treating them. So once they go into that uh, you know, fantasy land, they are not sure what is fact and what is uh, fiction, what is true and what is not true. And therefore, a lot of children, they develop false values by boasting to others, saying things which are not actually true. Father may have an old broken down car, but he will say, no, my father bought the best and most luxurious uh, car. Just to boast, just to try and, you know, boost up his uh, esteem or whatever it may be. Similarly, believing that it is true. Lot of children will say, he started the fight. He used bad words. He pushed me. He did this. He did that. And therefore, I am not the one who started the fight. I am not guilty. So he will try to protect himself, actually believing that what he's saying is uh, uh, true, that you know injustice has been done to me. And the last point in this is a typical thing of sibling rivalry. If you have one child and you're planning for a second child, please start preparing the child for it. If the child suddenly realizes that a young sibling has come in who's getting all the attention from the parents, even visitors when they come, oh, baby, show us the baby, we want to see the baby, they don't bother about him. And he has to do something to do attention seeking. Sometimes he does even wrong things purposely so that the adults will give him attention. So keep that in mind. Sibling rivalry is basically a very harmless thing, but it can in at times go into bad uh, uh, things. Just to give you one or two interesting uh, examples, I mentioned to you, you know that uh, I have this great psychologist who is uh, uh, from whom I've learned a lot. You remember him, Dennis the Menace. In one cartoon, Dennis is saying that I am not sorry for what I did. Then why are you forcing me to say sorry to Margaret? Now, Dennis has this in inverted commas girlfriend whom he hates. And that girl is always trying to provoke him or get close to him or whatever it is. So what Dennis did perhaps one particular day was he went and pulled her ponytail and she screamed and she came and complained to Dennis's mother. Now, Dennis's mother is saying, say sorry to Margaret. Dennis is saying, you only tell me not to tell lies. I am not feeling sorry. Given a chance, I'll pull her ponytail once more. But you are forcing me to say I'm sorry, which means you're forcing me to tell a lie. So where is the morality? 
Am I supposed to always tell the truth? Or you yourself are forcing me to tell lies? You see these simple, small uh, things. There was another very interesting uh, thing, how children get caught in that uh, you know, trap when the punishments become uh, high and when they are accused and when they feel that we are getting pressurized. There were these two boys, you know, siblings who are very naughty. And anything that used to happen, the first thing that people used to say, no, these boys must have done it. Because they used to be doing so many naughty and unwanted things that whenever something goes wrong, they would, without batting an eyelid, they would accuse these uh, boys that you are doing something. And obviously, when that started off, they started telling a lot of lies. Now, the parents got very fed up. Whatever they are trying, these children are just not learning not to tell lies. So one day they went to the priest and said, Father, you have a much higher authority and influence over these children. Why don't you tell them You know that you should not tell lies? I think they will listen to you. He said, okay, I will do it. Send the boys. Then what he did was he said, I'm going to talk to you one by one. So the younger fellow was sitting outside. The elder brother went in. And the priest started off in a very ominous voice. You know, God is watching you all the time. If you tell lies, you will get caught and you will be punished. Then he looks hard in, into the boy's face and said, Are you aware where is God? Do you know where is God? And this fellow started going back and back. And the priest started going front and front. Do you know where is God? Are you aware? Do you know where is God? This child got up, ran out of the room and told his younger brother, Now, God is missing and they think that we have stolen him. Come, run from here. This may be a joke. I don't know. But the fact remains that this is how we confuse uh, uh, children. If we do not understand their basic understanding. And as I told you, there is so much in terms of role modeling. There was another interesting uh, um, incident. The uh, principal of a school got up, left his cabin door open, obviously, and went for a round to see how the classes are going. When he came back, he saw one of his own students had quietly come into the principal's room and had taken some things from the principal's room and was running away. He caught him red-handed. And he got very angry. My own student stealing from my office. He forcibly grabbed hold of him, brought him inside and made him uh, uh, you know, sit down. And he started saying, you a thief, my own student. I feel so horrible thinking about it. Call the father. They called up the father. Please come immediately to the school. And the father got shocked. Maybe my son is not well or had an accident. He left everything and came running. And the principal says, what sort of upbringing have you given to your child? Your child is actually stealing things from my office. And the father was very shocked. I can't believe that my son is a thief. What? We uphold such high morals. I get up early in the morning and do puja for two hours. I pray to God. And my son, he is uh, stealing things. I am really feeling absolutely devastated, sir, he said. Then the father asked the principal, what was he stealing? So the principal said, we get these stacks of white paper, which we keep for the teachers in the principal room. Whenever the teachers want, they come in, they take these white papers. This fellow walked into my room, picked up a bundle of those white papers and was trying to run away when I caught him red-handed. The father started beating his forehead and said, of all the things he's stealing, paper, sir. Sir, I work in a government office. I get him as much paper as he wants. Why does he have to steal white paper? I am, I am unable to understand. Whenever he needs paper, or I have enough paper lying in my office. I just pick it up and bring it for him. Do I need to say anything further? Now, this is what I said. Okay. 
Now, more than just giving a lecture about what happens and how it happens and all that, let's always, as usual, look into what are the remedies. How is it that we can ensure that we bring down this concept of children telling lies or bluffing or trying to escape from reality and truth? Okay. Now, here are a few very simple tips. First is, when you, you feel that a child is telling lies, describe the event. You did this, this, this. You went into the principal room and you picked up those papers which are meant for teachers and you tried to run away with it. The impact. These papers are not meant for students. They are meant for teachers. So, so many papers which the teachers should have been using, they will get you know, shot. How you felt? I felt very hurt that our own school's child, my own child is taking things which he is not supposed to and end it up with how it can be set right. Okay, you need papers? Let's see how we can get it. Maybe we can have some rough papers lying around. Maybe we can go somewhere and get some cheap paper from somewhere and keep a stock for you. So that way, describe its event, what impact it has, how you felt and what can be set right. Which also brings me to the second point that is there should be consistency in discipline. If adults keep changing rules, children get very, very confused. And every now and then, they will also try to seek shortcuts. And because of that, they will have to forcibly tell lies. When you need to scold a child, supposing he has done something bad, he has told a lie or whatever it is. So you have to scold the child. You have to discipline uh, him. But immediately after that, express love to the child. Let the child understand that you are punishing the act and not the child. You are a thief. You are good for nothing. You keep doing horrible things. No. Stealing things, taking away paper from the principal's office is not acceptable. And anybody who does that will have to be punished. So since you are doing it today, we will have to punish you. This is the punishment. Preferably announce the punishment in advance that if somebody does this, this thing, what the punishment will be. Immediately after that, express your love to the uh, child. And that should be taken one step further to explain the right and wrong and with reasons. You won't believe me, there are so many things happening in a child's life which the child doesn't understand what is right and wrong. A family which is committed and clear that we eat only vegetarian uh, food. If the child eats non-vegetarian food, he's supposed to have done something bad. And he knows if he gets scolded. So he starts telling a lie that, no, I did not eat it. But he sees his other friend who comes from a non-vegetarian family. That fellow is happily eating. Nothing is going wrong. So which is right and wrong? For what should a person be scolded and for what a person should not be scolded? Like this, there are innumerable things that keep happening in a child's life. <coughs> Check whether you are overreacting. Whether you are comparing. Your brother never did this and you are doing this. None of the other students in class are doing it. You are the only one who is doing that. Never mix up studies with leisure. If during leisure something has to be set right, something the child is doing uh, wrong, focus on the what can be done better during the leisure activities. Don't keep bringing in studies all the uh, time. That is very important to ensure the self-esteem and honesty of the child. Same way, do not question in the presence of others. It is said that you should always praise publicly and scold privately. More than the scolding that you have given or the rectification or whatever discipline that you are giving to the child, the child becomes conscious that there are others who are listening. They may tease me. They may look down upon me. That becomes the prime area of focus of the child, not that I did something wrong for which I am getting punished. And also reward him when he tells the truth. Any time you find a child has developed a habit of every now and then he starts telling lies. 
He doesn't tell lies all the time, obviously, no. So whenever he is telling the truth, you must give him praise, you must give him positive strokes, you must give him non-material rewards. I'm so happy that you have been speaking the truth. I'm so happy that you have admitted that you have done this, this, this. Prevent guilt and shame. Guilt is because I did something bad. I'm a bad person. That's what I said. If you label the person, then guilt comes in. I am good for nothing. Shame is everybody will look down upon me. Nobody will come to play with me. Nobody will appreciate me. If such feelings come in a child's uh, uh, mind, it can really play havoc with the child. Please remember that self-worth or self-esteem is built on two pillars. The first is giving love to your child. All of us love children, whether they are our own or whether they are somebody else's. So yes, I think most of us, whenever possible and whichever way it is possible, we do give love. But the second part of it, which is emotional security. Why do, do, do you know, people feel that, you know, I have... Uh, uh, I can be vulnerable. Do I get, and this is again the same thing which I told you that if the child feels that regardless of the marks that I get, regardless of my performance, regardless of how good I am, I still get emotional security. I know that my parents give me unconditional love. These are the things which build the self-worth, self-esteem of a child. And of course, very important, encourage them to ask questions. So many times children get scared to ask questions and then they go and do something wrong. And when they are caught, they resort to telling lies just to escape from it. So encourage the child not only to ask questions, but give choices. Encourage autonomy. Tell the child, you select this, you decide this, you make this timetable, I will help you. And trust the child. Even if the child has been caught telling a lie, doing something bad, once, twice, three times, doesn't matter. Again, fourth time you say, I know that you are basically an honest and a child with good principles. I would still like to trust you. I will give you this benefit of doubt and ask you to do something today. And I will expect that you will do it truthfully. And of course, the last but definitely nowhere near the least is being a role model. Unless and until the child is surrounded by good role models, you are already aware that we are in a society where unlike even a generation back today, every second person in public life be it a politician, be it a bureaucrat or a police officer or be it a celebrity or a cricket player or film actor. Everyone, every second or third person is getting caught in some scandals. And because of social media, children are aware of what these adults are doing. So as it is, children of today are facing a dearth of role models. I belong to that generation where as a small child, we were told that the prime minister of the country is not Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru, he is Chacha Nehru. He had this wonderful rose in his white long coat and a Gandhi cap and a cute smile. And we used to celebrate our prime minister Pandit Nehru's birthday as children's day. Those were the type of role models that we had. Even Lal Bahadur Shastri after him. I remember those people very distinctly as a small child. They built that solidness in us that yes, at a country level, we can be proud because we have got these great role models. Today, as I said, so many politicians, so many bureaucrats, so many police officers, so many even army officers sometimes are said to be getting into scandals. So there is no good role model available outside. The least we can do is to ensure that we are good role models within the immediate circle of the child. That will give him a great boost 
and he will start thinking positively. Okay. So now that I also want think pos to think positively, I'll take a quick one minute break and have a cup of tea. And Mira is here with you as usual to just quickly update you on what's happening in Mandela. Yes, good morning, everyone. And like you all were hearing Dr. Ali talk about children and role modeling and, um, you know, different ways of how to help children. So Banjara, as you know, is very passionate that we have, uh, you know, happy children rather than broken adults. So our IPCAD, that is the International Program in uh, Child and Adolescent Development has started. We've had the inaugural class. And, um, you know, we have a, a group of uh, significant adults who are so excited and really want to make a difference in children's lives and want to be a support and touch their lives and help society in a certain way. Because we say, even if you've made a difference in one child's life, you've made a difference. So we've had the inaugural class and in the inaugural class, we introduced the entire team. And Dr. Ali spoke about why invest in children. So what is the need or what is the purpose and, uh, you know, how important it is for us in the future to invest in these children. We also have a free counseling, which we do through the phone, uh, email. You can uh, message us, contact us, walk in. Uh, we do, uh, you know, we are passionate to be there for all of you. We also have free career counseling wherein, uh, you know, for children to take them forward in their career paths to help them select a correct career for themselves because career stays with us for the rest of our lives. And that is what yields us all the benefits that we have to live a good life. So we have free career counseling. Uh, we are also closed on the 24th and 26th of October uh, being Diwali. And I would also like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a very happy Diwali, a very happy weekend. And may this, uh, you know, Festival of Lights bring in a lot of prosperity to all of you. So, yes, that's what's happening at Banjara. And uh, now we shall have uh, Dr. Ali uh, in the Q&A session. So have a great weekend and happy festival to all of you. Yes, I'm back and I'm happily back and I'm ready for the very thought provoking questions that I keep getting every Saturday. Believe me, I make notes of some of the points which you people raise and certain questions which you put up, you know, because it helps me to think further, go deeper into a subject. Sometimes I add it to my notes or to our little booklets that I keep uh, writing. So please continue with your interactions. Keep asking questions. Keep making comments. Even if you disagree with me, I think that really will be useful not only to me, but to all the other viewers also of this uh, program. So we start with Surekha. How can we help a child who is punished today for a behavior that was ignored or even rewarded yesterday? You remember one of the points that I had said was consistency. If there is no consistency in the way the, uh, the child is being disciplined, the child will really come out to be very confused child. He will not understand his value system or what needs to be done and how it needs to be uh, done and stuff like that. So if at all such a thing is happening, the least we can do as concerned adults is to explain to him that this was for something that you had done long back. And maybe you have forgotten it. And maybe at that time it was not told to you. And if you have access to the adults who are doing this, please tell them that the impact of trying to correct a child happens only if it is immediate. The child's memory is very short and the child will forget what he or she has done. And then when you try to punish, it has no impact. Vidya says how to explain the child that in certain circumstances, it is okay to lie and that too, 
Why do we lie during these circumstances? I don't know whether you're... Is it absolutely necessary in certain circumstances? And if so, where do we draw the uh, line? So if I want to, you know, tell my customer that, you know, I am monitoring your dispatches of your material, I don't have to tell a lie that I am in the factory. If I have the courage and the guts and the confidence, I can say, sir, don't worry, I'm at home, but I'm keeping track of the material. I have very trusted people there and I'm supervising over them from here and I will ensure that it is uh, done. If the person is very unreasonable and it may lead to heavy losses and you will get scolded by your boss or something and if you have to do it, please don't do it in the presence of the child at least. That's the least that I would request um, adults. Let the child not see his significant adult like father, grandfather, mother, teacher, that they are also telling lies. Ah, Vidya is also asking also to what extent we can lie. I wish there was a barometer which says, okay, like you have an exam, no, 40% is pass, 60% is first class or something like that. No, I think somewhere along the line, if we make up our mind that if at all we have to, you know, tell lies, we can also do it by keeping quiet. I have tried this out many times and it does... Uh, uh, help. If a person is forcing me that, you know, do you think, don't you think this is right? Don't you think that it should be done this way and something? And I disagree with uh, uh, him or her. I just look at the person with a smile and nod my head and change the topic. So somewhere along the line, I'm making it clear that I'm not, you know, agreeing to what you have uh, said. Try as far as possible. Ah, Dr. Sai Kumar says, good morning, Ali Saab. Good topic, but hope you will have one on why adults lie. Yes, why not? Yes, Doc, we shall uh, do that. A lot of things, in uh, you know, what we call as morals and values and all that. Yes, I take your uh, suggestion. We will have it. Mez says, how do you explain to a child the difference between a white lie and an actual lie? My question, Mez, and to all of you is, why do we need to, uh, you know, differentiate? As I told you, sometimes, you know, silence, sometimes giving that knowing look or a smile can be enough. You don't actually have to tell a white uh, lie. There are occasions somebody will come and ask you, isn't this dress fantastic? Don't you think I'm looking great in this uh, uh, dress? You can look at that person with a smile and a little nod and all that and say, yeah, you should tell where these resources are available and, where, you know, I would also like to see and something like that. But you have not categorically told a white lie just to please that person and say, yes, this dress is actually looking very good on you. Try as much as possible. There's no perfection in these matters, right? Ah, where did the term white lie originate? Yes, Ms. I don't know. I should find out that again, like I told you, no, there's good food for uh, thought when you people. So let me also find out, you can also, what is the uh, origin? I'm making a note of it. I'm also making a note of uh, what Dr. Sai Kumar said. Why do adults uh, uh, lie? I think we should uh, do, a, I'll do a little more exploration on it. And when I'm ready with it, I'll announce it as a topic. Yes, Vaidehi says, how do we try to understand if the child is telling a lie when something happens in our absence with a third uh, party? I told you this factor of trust. Tell the child I trust you. I know that basically you are a child who upholds values and who will not do things wrong. I also understand that sometimes you get little, you know, flustered and you feel that you are cornered or you feel that you will be punished. And therefore, you resort to trying to look for a shortcut for a lie. If you are doing that, I will not force you. We will close the topic now. But for future, I would really request you to keep away from these sort of uh, things and ensure that you don't land in a situation where you have to tell a lie. If you come beforehand and tell me that this is what has happened and this is what has gone wrong, as far as possible, I will try to see to it that I do not unnecessarily uh, scold you. I will accept it. Primarily because of the reason that you came and told me and I didn't hear it from a third person, right? 
हाँ गायत्री सेज इज इट पॉसिबल टू टीच वैल्यूज टू एडोलसेंस इज दस ऑन काउंसिल Yes, it is possible to teach values to adolescents. It's a little more difficult than teaching values to children, but definitely not impossible. I feel even adolescents are work in progress. Till they come to that adulthood stage, as I told you, they are looking for an identity, and if that identity of theirs is of upholding certain principles and values and leading a very clear and a life where you can hold your head up uh, high. main thing with adolescence is when you teach them these values of telling truth or whatever it is you should satisfy their need of what is in it for me because they will argue with you that somebody who tells lies has progressed has done wonderful uh, things has uh, received uh, benefits which the other person did not benefit you listen make them talk make them ask questions and then help them to understand that if this person has cheated and got certain things and right now he is happy sometime or the other he will feel guilty sometime or the other there will be regret sometime or the other his self esteem will go down that i reached where i am or i achieved what i wanted through fraudulent uh, means and that person will not have a peaceful life after that ah yes Satya says, "How do we teach the basic things to children like behavior when they go to others' house? When parents are quite okay with all the mischievous behavior, we feel like correcting but restricting ourselves. No, don't restrict yourself. Explain to the child. I gave you the example of a vegetarian family and a non-vegetarian family, right? Now, if you are a vegetarian family and if your child goes to somebody else's house and starts eating non-veg food, will you tolerate? Will you accept it? No." you have certain very basic values which says that no we don't let them eat we have nothing against them we are not putting them down we are not condemning people who eat non veg food but we follow this thing so if there is consistency if you do it on a regular basis if you are good role models you can slowly start teaching the uh, child review every time that he goes to somebody's house comes back what were the good things he did praise him for it what were the bad things that he uh, did caution him about it and prepare him the next time saying see last time you remember when you had gone to such and such friend's house and all that this unpleasantness happened and i had to remind you i don't want to do that again because i love you i trust you i want you to do good things so that when you come back i will be in a position to welcome you and to praise uh, you roshan says parents are good role models to teach morals and values when a visitor who is a stickler would come to our house purposely we would hide inside and tell our children that we have gone out we are teaching them to speak lies to avoid people whom we don't like to be with at the same time we tell them to speak the truth what impression exactly uh, roshan this is what i have been saying about uh, uh, role modeling you have to have the courage to face that person learn the skill of assertiveness face the person and say right now i am very busy i don't have time can i come and meet you sometime later i myself will meet you sometime later and i'm sorry i have to excuse myself develop that habit and that uh, uh, thing otherwise again like i reminded you about dennis the menace he picks up the phone and he says my mom is saying that she is not at home this is what children think of that mom said tell him that i'm not at home so she he is repeating saying my mom is saying she is not at uh, Uh, oh see how embarrassing things can be right yes yasmin google says the oxford english dictionary which also defines a white lie as one meant to protect someone's feeling traces to a 14th century letter thanks yasmin you have done very quick googling for us so before i could uh, you know explore you have already given us a good uh, um, answer uh, uh, to it yes as i told you sometimes we do need to be a little cautious in criticizing or putting down somebody if it is going to hurt their sentiment but again it comes back to a point do you actually have to tell a so called white lie or can you just you know change the topic bring it into something more softer generalize the uh, thing yes actually you know white dresses look good on you so i'm not confirming that this dress is good because i don't feel it is good but 
you have not hurt the feeling of the person by saying, no, this is looking bad on you. If you learn these very basic, simple ways and means, you can get away, you know, without telling even white lies. Vinita says, sometimes the best part of is uh, children say lies in front of us and assuming we should believe uh, uh, them. Yes, that's what I said. No, many children tell lies either to impress their uh, elders. They feel unless and until I boast or unless I tell a lie, I will not get. There's a clear indication that there is something going wrong in our uh, interaction with the child. If the child has to tell lies to get our uh, attention or our praise that means we are praising the child for the wrong reasons you praise the child for whatever she is intrinsically what are the good things in uh, her the more you praise a child for the good things like i even told you a child who has got a habit of telling lies the moment he tells the truth bring it to his attention and say i'm so happy that you straight away told the truth i really appreciate uh, that so when he starts realizing that he gets attention and affection when he does the right things, slowly his attitude will start changing. Divya says, sometimes kids observe the surrounding and family. And when the family members tell some kind of lie due to some reason, the kid comes to know. Next time the kid will explore that same and defend themselves with reasons for it. So I felt it should be nurtured from childhood and elders should be very much self-aware while communicating with any person or uh, situation. That's what I said, you know, that there was this question earlier also that if there is a reason, if there is a proper thing, can we tell lies? No, somehow I feel that, you know, you start off by doing something which can lead on, like how we tell about addiction, that you start with the first drink, saying, what is it? I'm just a social drinker. I'm just having one drink to unwind. You don't know where you are headed. The same thing happens about these uh, value systems and all these principles and all that, where we are, you know, looking at lies. So in front of children, let us be extremely careful what we uh, do. Amduta says, if child tells lies, how should we tell them not to tell lies if they want to share everything with us? How should we be with them? The first step in that is listening without interruption, without judgment. Whenever the child comes and says something which you disapprove of, don't stop the child and correct the child or scold the child. Just let the conversation flow. Let the child describe everything. You know, Ma, today in the school, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rohit and I decided that we will steal the water bottle of Sushma because she is always trying to be very snooty with us. So we hid her water bottle and then she was crying and this and that. Listen, just listen. Don't interrupt and say, why are you doing this? That is bad. How can you do this? You made the poor child cry. No. Let him get away with uh, uh, it. Now, when he feels that I have been able to tell my adult, even when I do wrong things and I don't get a negative reaction, he feels comfortable in sharing. Give time one day or over the weekend when the child and you are alone and there is no pressure on time. You're not doing any other activity. Make the child sit down and say, I was reflecting about what you told me last Wednesday. When you people did this, 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 you said that, that uh, uh, Sushma broke down and cried. You, they're all your friends and they're your classmates. No, do you want anybody? How would you feel, uh, you know, if uh, somebody does something bad to Rohit and he starts crying? Would you feel bad being his uh, friend? What if somebody does it to you? So, you know, what happens is that one person does something, another person wants to take revenge. It's an endless thing. Okay. If Sushma is snooty and you do want to say something, why don't you try a better method? Come, let's explore. See, with children, when you give them alternatives, no, they're very happy. If you tell them, if you do that next time, I am going to punish you, you know what he will do? He will do it in such a manner that he will not be caught and he will not be uh, punished. And he will not come and tell you. Even if you ask, he'll say, no, I don't know who took that water bottle. I didn't uh, do it. Let's prevent that from happening. So these are some of the things, you know, which come out very often on a day to day basis. It is not a one time thing that, you know, you just have to start off with uh, something. 
impose something on the child, tell the child that, yes, you should always tell the truth, you should not tell lies, and you feel that, yes, I have done my duty. Bringing up children in whatever capacity, I told you, you, know, you need not be a parent. You can be a neighbor, you can be a teacher, you can be a counselor, you can be just a concerned adult, a relative, whatever you are. The prime consideration of this whole thing is that children are work in progress. They are very impressionable and at the same time they are molded right up to adolescence also. We have to take care of uh, that. Okay, Dr. Shirin says, in school, 5th, 6th standard, we had a saying, if our friends tell a lie, it was liar, liar, lipstick, sat on a broomstick, broomstick broke, liar got a poke. Wonderful. If you can use the peers to influence them, nothing like it. So you have these just growing up children, 5th, 6th standard, 10, 11, we call them tweens nowadays. So you have these sort of children. If you can inculcate in the whole group, if you can get the group of friends or if you can get all the classmates or whoever is accessible to you and tell them that do not allow your friends, whoever it may be. You love your friends, you play with them, you do everything with them. But whenever they tell a lie, come, let's work out something. And they come out with this beautiful thing saying, liar, liar, lipstick, sat on a broomstick, broomstick broke, liar got a poke. Okay, laugh over it and move on. And again say, okay, come, let's play, let's do something. Don't hold grudges. Don't label that person as a liar or something like that. And that, you know, effect from peers has a very good impact, better impact than if adults tell them some uh, thing. Ah, Vidya is asking, can we have one love session on how to recognize a toddler's mood swings? Yes, why not? That's also a good uh, thing. I'm making a note of it. Toddler's mood swings. Yes. Toddlers actually, you know, are very interesting uh, uh, human beings. Main thing is that we tend to ignore them or to take them too easy because they're so small. So while we love playing with toddlers or laughing and joking with them or singing something with them, but we don't take them seriously. I feel we should do that. I've been constantly reminding all of you that the first few years of a child life are very, very important, more important than the years following that, because by the time the child is already a semi-finished product. When you have a small child, you have raw material, like the raw clay, which a potter uses. If the potter is given a nice wet lump of clay, he can make anything out of it. But once it starts forming shape, when it is a semi-finished product, after that it becomes very difficult. So that is what I caution people. Vidya says, can we have one session on how to discipline a toddler despite uh, especially when we go to somebody's place. Yes, why not? We'll include that, of course, because that's another thing that we uh, find. Not only when you go to somebody's uh, place, you uh, go to a mall where there are dozens and dozens of people all uh, around, and the child says, I want to buy this expensive toy, and you say, no, it's stupid. It's too expensive. I won't buy this. I'll buy something else for you. And the toddler starts throwing a tantrum. He will sit down on the gra ground. He will hit his head. He will scream his head off. Because he knows that people are watching and you will get very embarrassed and probably just to make him sh uh, shut up, you will buy that toy and give it to him. That is where it takes a lot of your courage, your steadfastness, your belief that you are doing the right thing. And you say you can cry as much as you want. You can scream, let everybody watch. You are the one who they are watching and laughing at, not me. I have not done anything. Because this brings me to a very significant point, which I have been telling every now and then, that is, parenting is not a popularity contest. Please make note of it. Parenting is not a popularity contest. You do not do parenting to get the approval and appreciation and admiration of others. 
Forget about people in the mall, not even your mother or mother-in-law or neighbors. Even if they look down upon you and say you're a bad parent or you're a bad teacher, it doesn't matter. If your conscience is clear, if whatever you are doing is primarily in the welfare of the child, and that is why I always say that whenever you are getting ready to discipline a child, to restrict a child, to point out mistakes of a child, first make sure that your emotions are under control. That's very, very uh, important. Roshan says, my sister in her teens would always speak lies as she wanted something which she never got. Here's a classic example for all of us. That here is this growing little girl who has come to teenage, who's looking for an identity, who has become conscious about what her needs and her wants are. But somehow she gets the impression, whether it's true or not, that when I ask directly, when I request my elders, they don't give it to me. So I will tell lies, I will manipulate, I will somehow see to it that I get it. That's not a very nice thing for a teenager to learn, no? So sit down with that teenager. Even if you have to refuse, let's say the teenager is asking you for something unreasonable. Explain to her why. Go by her emotions. Acknowledge the fact that I know you must be feeling upset. Maybe you are very angry with me because I am refusing this uh, uh, to you. It doesn't matter. I know your anger will go away, but I still know that what I am doing is right. And this is why I am doing it. Now you tell me what do you feel? And she'll say, no, I don't agree with you. I feel that everybody, all my friends are getting it and I'm the only one who's not getting it. Yes, dear, just because all your friends are getting it is no reason for getting it. I will give you what you deserve and desire. I will give you what we can afford and I will give you what I think is right for uh, you. But I am not going to give it to you just because all your friends have got it. If there are certain friends who have not got it, what will you do about that? I'm sure not all of your friends have got it. So there would be other friends who have not got it. Supposing I start quoting them to you, how upset you will be. So this is the way to gently, patiently, somehow bring the child around, particularly when the child comes to adolescence. And that is what I think is very, very important. Because when adolescents start telling lies, it becomes more and more and more difficult to you know, set them right. The earlier you do it, the better it is. Do not ignore and do not be so strict as to you know, start punishing the moment a child tells lies, you start screaming and you start scolding and all these uh, uh, things. No, it doesn't. And definitely not what we refer to as capital punishment. Don't ever raise your hand on a child. Maybe a small toddler, a little back here and there just to set him right and all that is okay. But from the time the child becomes old enough, to have a good communication with you, you should never use physical means of you know, punishing the child. In the worst case, you can hold the hand of the child very tightly, even to the extent that it pains, and say, no, I'm not letting go because you are hitting your sister. So I will not leave your hand. You have to calm down. Come, let's sit down and talk about uh, it. Then I will let you go. If the child keeps on screaming, be firm. Sometimes the child will sort of, you know, mellow down and narrow down. Immediately give a praise. See, you look so nice when you're not shouting, when you're, you know, talking so softly to me and when you are acknowledging certain things. You actually look more pretty with a smile on your uh, uh, face, you know. That's what I also feel and other people also have been telling me uh, that. Come, let's try and deal with it. I know you're upset. I know you're angry. That's why you went to say, hit your uh, sister. But while I acknowledge your anger, I do not acknowledge and accept the action that you did. There are other ways of dealing with the anger. Come, let's work on it. Which brings us to the final thing which I've always been telling. In this young generation, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, management of emotions, motivation, empathy, and social skills. 80 to 90% of the upbringing and the you know, fulfillment and achievement of the younger generation will depend on how well you nurture the emotional intelligence. So with that, as we near the sound of the 12 o'clock uh, clock, let me just 
make you aware that next Saturday we are going to be discussing friends of convenience going all the way to marriage of convenience. So many of us indulge in such things. What it is and how it is and what happens, I will discuss with you. You can also look up and then tell me what your opinions are so that the more we have a lively discussion, the better it is for us. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful Diwali. And I will see you at 11 o'clock next Saturday, which is the 29th of October. Bye-bye.